Okay, will we pray already? Let's go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. It's Wednesday today, February 24, 2021. And the gospel for today's Mass comes from St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 29 to 32. Okay, uh, there's a lot to, uh, to unpack in this particular gospel message, so we will try to do it as efficiently as we can. So let's start by reading. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. Oh. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jonah the prophet to the Ninevites, right? We're going to look into the uh, story of Jonah in a while. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with his generation and condemn it. Because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. Our Lord says this is an evil generation. He was referring to the Jews of his time, right? Why are they an evil generation? Because they kept demanding a sign from him. Sign of what? A proof that he is really the Messiah the way he claimed to be. Right? So all of the words of wisdom of Jesus, all the preaching, all the miracles, all the healing that he has done is not enough for them to have faith in the truth that he is the Messiah. But, you see, the truth of the matter here is that yeah, while they are very stubborn. And while they really don't have faith, the other part of the story here is they're really evil. <laughs> evil because they are only interested in trapping him, in catching him doing something wrong, which they can accuse him of, they can try him for, and they can finally execute him for. And kill him. That's the agenda. <laughs> that is the agenda. Because really. The leaders of the Jews. The scribes. The Pharisees. They really didn't want Jesus. Because he was competition for them. You know. So it's not a question only of not believing. All the proofs that he has already shown them. But it's really. That they did not like. Any competition from Jesus. And that is. Nothing more but being. Really, really an evil scheme to get rid of him, okay? And continue to assert their own authority over the Jewish people. So that's the hidden agenda of these, of these Jews. And I hate to make a parallelism, but looks like that's exactly what's happening in our times now, in our political environment here in America, right? So, well, anyway, pardon me for that political insertion of a political commentary, but I can't help but see the parallelism of what's going on here. But anyway, our Lord tells them, you know what? Nope, there's not going to be extra proof for, for you. The only proof, uh, the only sign that you should remember is the sign of Jonah. Now let's recall a little bit. Who was Jonah? What was Jonah all about in the story of Jonah, right? So briefly, the story of Jonah goes like, you know, God spoke to Jonah, told him to go to Nineveh and, uh, and tell the people there to repent. Okay, Nineveh, not part of the Jewish uh, chosen people, right? Go there and repent. 
and, and preach to them. Okay? But what did Jonah do? Instead of obeying God, he escaped, tried to escape from God. He boarded a boat okay, and sailed somewhere the opposite way to Nineveh. What happened? Well, the boat got caught in a, in a uh, storm. And the people were wondering, okay, why? Why do we have a storm right in the middle of uh, no storm season, supposedly? And so there must be somebody around here who's causing God to be angry. And then Jonah was forced to admit that he was actually escaping from the will of God. And so what did they do? Well, he said, yeah, you're going to throw me out of the boat <laughs> and you're going to be safe in your journey. And so that's what they did. They threw him out. What happened? He was swallowed by a big fish right? Maybe a whale and kept in the belly of the fish for three days. Then our Lord God spoke to the fish and told the fish to spit out Jonah. And when he spat him out, he spat him out in the beach of Nineveh. And there he continued to uh, do the, what God told him to do, preach repentance to the city of Nineveh. Now, what was that how is that in relation to Jesus? Well, our Lord was trying to remind the Jews of his time. Recall Jonah and what happened to Jonah. Okay? He was actually referring to himself. That that's exactly, well, the metaphor about his death and eventual resurrection. That he too, Jesus Christ, was going to be in the belly of the earth. See? Buried for three days. The same three days that Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Okay? And then later on was spat out into the beach and continued to preach repentance for uh, 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 the people of Nineveh. Our Lord will get out of that belly of the earth, resurrect from it after three days of being dead. Okay? So that was the sign. The biggest proof, the hope, upon which we base our entire faith is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is why Easter, the resurrection, is the biggest feast in the Catholic faith. Okay? It is not Christmas. It is not anything else. It is Easter. That's why Easter is the biggest feast. It's because the, our entire faith is anchored on our belief and hope in the resurrection. Okay? So that was the biggest proof. In the end, that Jesus was saying, you just wait. You just wait. I am going to rise from the dead. And that's the biggest proof that you, nobody can dispute afterwards. Okay, now, uh, but there is another sign there. There's another implication of the sign that our Lord's talking about. And what is that other implication for our times now? And not only for our times, but this thing actually happened among among the uh, you know the Jewish uh, the Jewish people and that is if they don't repent they don't repent God is going to punish them for their sins okay God is going to punish them for their sins now when when Jonah proclaimed uh, the the word of God to Nineveh Nineveh repented a pagan city repented okay and went back to God. Whereas, whereas, you know, other communities, other Jewish uh, 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 communities and cities did not. They did not. That's why out of the 12 tribes of Israel, for example, the only ones that survived were, were uh, the, the Levites and uh, what was the other one? The ones that were in Assyria. Okay. And uh, the rest of the other 10 tribes were practically annihilated with uh with the the um overpowered right by their enemies see so this prophecy of jonah has happened in the past and continues to happen in many other situations and we can apply this to our own personal lives that if we do not repent well the sign of jonah is going to happen to us personally what's this, what is that well we are going to to be punished for our own sins Okay? We will be punished for our own sins. There will be disaster that's going to befall us. Okay, And it, what we have to understand is that, you know, uh, it's not that God is vindictive, that he's going to punish us because 
because of our sins. No, actually, when we sin, we bring condemnation upon ourselves. Okay? We bring condemnation upon ourselves. We are the ones who are punishing ourselves because of our sinfulness. Okay? Mm. Yes, what do you want? Mm? Okay? We are actually the ones bringing our own punishment. That is why what our Lord is telling us here is, you have to repent. If you don't repent from your sins, okay, you're going to merit the punishment that Jonah had proclaimed to Nineveh. Okay? We need to repent. We need to sincerely be sorry for our sins. We need to be deeply sorry for our sins. We need to be completely sorry for our sins. And this is exactly what we do when we go to confession. Okay? When we go to confession, we, we have to be really, really sorry for our sins. Okay? The, uh, the Ninevites, <laughs> the Ninevites uh, beginning from the king, okay, uh, sat in sackcloth and ashes. They repented. They were sorry for their sins. And that is why they evaded the wrath of God. Okay? And it was a sincere repentance. Sincere repentance. That is what we need to do in our confessions all the time. Because we have to realize that God is merciful. He's infinitely merciful. But what we should not forget is that He is also infinitely just. Okay? Uh, nowadays, all you hear people preaching about and, and people saying, including that bishop, where was that, honey? We were listening to that bishop last night who was saying, oh, you know, you think, you think God is going to send his uh, children to, to, uh, to bed without supper as a punishment? <laughs> well, yeah, he will. Okay? Not because he is vindictive, not because he, he, he wants to punish people, but the truth of the matter is God is all just and he deals punishment to us because we, in the first place, merited that. We brought it upon ourselves and we did not repent. You see, God gives us plenty of opportunities every day of our lives to repent from our sins. But if we don't, then it's already our fault. You know, it's our fault if we don't. And if we go to hell, like sending a kid to, to bed without supper, as this bishop alluded to, if we go to hell, that's like going to bed without supper. It's our own fault. And yes, God as a good parent will do that. After giving us all the opportunities to correct our faults and straighten up our lives. And yet we are so stubborn about being bad, about being sinful. Well, then that is already our own fault. We have been given so many occasions to be able to change our lives. And if we still don't, then, well, we merit our own punishment. Okay? So, that is why when we go to confession, make sure that every confession counts. Make sure that you're really sincere in your repentance from sin. Make sure that your, con your contrition is really complete. Your penance is complete. Right? And the way to complete it is not just by making your act of uh, purpose of amendment, okay? But it's actually to show it in your behavior. It is to show it later on in the way that you behave, in the way that you conduct yourself, in the way that you live your lives. It doesn't end with words and with good intentions. You have to translate it into an actual reality in your own lives. Okay? So again, we are in the time of Lent, and Lent is the period offered to us by the church to go deeper and deeper in our sense of repentance, in our sense of contrition, in our sense of reforming our lives and going back to God. Okay, So let's take advantage of this opportunity that the church offers us to do just that and i know it might be difficult nowadays to find a priest or a parish where you can go to confession but i encourage everybody to make the effort
to do so, to make the effort to do so. You know, uh, in our own family, we have to call the priests, okay? That's what we do. We have to make actual appointments just to be able to do our confession. Uh, it has been erratic these past so many months, but we have to put the effort to continue availing of this sacrament because that is a sacrament that God, our Lord, has given us as the conduit okay, to receive forgiveness from sin and to avail of the grace that He wants to shower over us for every confession we make. Let's make every confession count. Let's make our contrition sincere and our purpose of amendment real okay? by putting things into practice in our daily lives. Okay, that's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Shall we say goodbye, Ava? Huh? No more? <laughs> she dawned on her her doctor uh, outfit and uh, she's now trying to diagnose uh, her brothers and sisters here. Okay, have a good day, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye.